What we're going to discuss in this video is the what, why, and how hierarchy. We can almost see every movement as an onion that has layers. So the what is the external layer. The why is the next internal layer. And the how is really important, is our core layer. Okay. So let's take, for example, a what being a lunge. We have a why. It might be to open the back hip. It might be to work on single leg uh, strength so on and so forth. The why is basically the reasoning behind the what. We then have the how, and the how is what we're gonna try and look at in a few details here. So I'll take the lunge and I'll use Dan. So Dan can do a lunge and he can do it all day long and he can just do it without thinking about it. And lunge, 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 blah, blah, blah. This is great. But if we have a clearer focus as the how, where I'm limited and where this movement can really help me and most importantly therefore then how I do it we have a better understanding. So Dan, let's say for example, he's limited in ankle dorsiflexion. So when he's doing the lunge he's not only training his back hip extension he can also really focus on driving this knee as far over his toes as possible and then trying to get his heel to the floor. So he, the how is his intention. He's intending to use as much ankle dorsiflexion as possible here. As opposed to just coming back up again, to limiting that dorsiflexion, let's say the knee only gets to here, there's about a 90 degree bend in his ankle, and he's like, yep, I've done the lunge really well, but it doesn't quite get as deep as he could. So therefore the intention is key. Let's take another example. Let's say the Cossack squat. So maybe this time, Dan is limited in another area. Maybe he's limited in his hamstrings. He can get really nice and deep in the Cossack with a flat foot, but as soon as he turns his toes to the sky, he can't quite get that motion or he feels a bit uncomfortable. So we have two options. He can either do this with the flat foot forever and ever and ever, get a nice positive feedback loop, but maybe not get the stimulus that he could do if he pointed the toes to the sky. In this question, we would say, well, Maybe to get most from this exercise, Dan could switch to the toes up variation and get more, main, more range of motion. Or vice versa. This is really up to you to have a conversation with yourself and dig into that how. This is the core of everything. One final example could be a, a, a hinge, forward falls. So the how with this one is incredibly important because we can do a hinge again all day long. We can fall forward, stand up, fall forward, stand up. And gravity does, can you pause here for one second, down? Gravity does quite a lot of work for us here. The weight of the body and the pull of gravity downwards gets down to a good range of motion. But if he then actively pulls himself with his anterior chain deeper, he now sends a clear signal to his body. I want to use more range of motion and I'm actively using it. He's then going to adapt and actually gain more range of motion. Rather than gravity kind of pulling him down and he's standing up and resisting that, he's encouraging himself to move past and use gravity to add range of motion. Beautiful. Thank you. These are just some simple ideas of how we can do movement. Again, like I said before, it's important for you to take responsibility and feel what's going on. Feel where you're limited and really try and use that as a conversation to help yourself.